Hi guys, my name is Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a 2018 reading wrap-up. Apologies for my voice in advance. For Christmas, the customers gave me the plague, so... <laughs> <coughs> I'm only just starting to get over the plague. Clearly cleaned up my room for you. You're welcome. So this past year I have been keeping track of my reading in my bullet journal, all the things that I've read, star ratings, when I finished them, etc. I went through and I picked some of my favorites. Just things that I feel like are still worth talking about, still worth mentioning. I set myself a goal of reading 50 books. That's a little less, that's actually two less than one a week. And I ended up reading 112 books. My most productive month was April, which is when I had my wisdom teeth out and I had like two and a half weeks off work recovering from that surgery. So it was more than a book a week there. And then I think the lowest I read in a month was maybe like three or four. So it's been a little bit all over the place this year, not very consistent. Out of the 112 books that I read this year, here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here are seven that I think are worth highlighting uh, in no particular order. Let's start with Gossip from the Forest by Sarah Maitland. So this is a piece of nonfiction that took me by surprise. Sarah Maitland goes to various ancient woodlands around the UK and she hikes in these forests and she talks about forestry practices. And I guess what she's doing is really rooting the creation of folk and fairy tale in the forest, in the physical environment. And at the end of each chapter, she does a fairy tale retelling. And I absolutely loved this. I loved the historical aspects. I loved learning about forestry and like jobs that don't exist or are dying out. I loved her reflections on the type of like flora and fauna and how these things sort of look otherworldly and magical and how you can see the natural world inspiring magic in stories. And then I just loved the fairy tale retellings. They were all really good and Overall, this I think is a really great read, even if you're not super into nonfiction, just because it has the folk and fairy tale and the fairy tale retellings in it. The next book I have here, I read last January and I ended up really, really liking it. And it didn't win the teen spotum, teen staff pick of the month. I voted for this but it didn't win, but I think it's fantastic. And that is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. So this is the story of Lee, whose mother has recently died by suicide. And she goes through this grieving process by reconnecting with her mother's estranged family in Taiwan. She doesn't believe that her mother is dead. She believes that her mother has come back as this red bird who is guiding her on this journey to reconnect with her maternal grandparents and family in Taiwan. On the one hand, it's this exploration of grief and trauma. And then on the other hand, interspersed between like the really serious stuff, is Lee connecting with her best friend. The two of them are artists and they really understand each other and so you see their friendship, you see them growing up. I just love it. It's one of those books that like every time I look at it I'm like yeah I gotta reread that. I feel like it hasn't got the hype it deserves. It's a blending of a little bit of magic into the contemporary and I just think it's really well done. So I read this twice this year. I finished it the first time on January 5th, 2018 and I finished it for the second time on November 21st of 2018 and that is Tempest and Slaughter by Tamora Pierce. So this is the new Tamora Pierce. This... <sighs> If you're new here, you don't know, Tamor Pierce is like my favorite children's fantasy author. I grew up reading her. I did my master's thesis on her. Her works are just so close to my heart and I was both highly anticipating this release as well as kind of wary of it because this would be the first Tamor Pierce book really that I picked up as an adult that has like no nostalgia attached to it. Um, it's picking up a character that I was sort of indifferent towards in the Immortals series and going back to his childhood. So I was a little bit worried about like overhyping it for myself and being disappointed. And I wasn't disappointed. I loved it. 
I loved exploring who Numer was before he became this big epic battle mage. So we get to see him before he's taken on his mage name as the lowly Aram Draper, a young student who comes into the magical university in Karthak to study to be a mage. And he's basically a very advanced student, ends up in almost the equivalent of a grad school program, like it's very independent study, self-directed, one-on-one -on -one with a supervisor. I think that is in part why I liked it so much, because it speaks to my most recent experience in education, and like I loved my master's. I would love to go back to school and do another master's or a PhD. So like watching a character do something very similar but plus magic was great. I loved the exploration of the politic of the politics of Karthak. I loved seeing some of these characters that we see as adults in the Immortal series as children, see what shapes them. And I love just the expanding universe because recently rereading Tamora Pierce's Tortal Universe books, I have a lot of questions about how magic works and what it means to do magic. So seeing someone in a university setting learning magic was interesting just for my own interests. If you want to get into Tamora Pierce, start here. If you're a Tamora Pierce fan and maybe you weren't aware that this was a release, it's finally here. If you like YA fantasy, I think you will like this. Check it out. The next book I have here was a reread. I picked this up during the time that I had my wisdom teeth out because I wanted something cozy and fun to go back to. Um, also, the movie was coming out soon and, you know, I wanted to do like a book to movie comparison for myself. It is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Abertali. And this remains my favorite Becky Abertali work. I have now read this, uh, Leah on the Offbeat and the Upside of Unrequited, plus her collaborative novel, What If It's Us. This is the story of Simon, who is a closeted gay teen and who is blackmailed by a peer who finds out when he sort of spies on Simon's emails that Simon is gay and in an email relationship with one of their peers. And he threatens to expose Simon if Simon doesn't help him integrate better into the social circle and date one of Simon's friends. I loved this book. It gives me all the warm fuzzy feels and I feel like this is one of those books that is so hyped on the internet. It has a movie. I feel like people talk about it a lot and because it has so much hype it's probably easy to dismiss it as just like silly YA drivel, but I really do think that Albert Talley has quality writing despite writing cute YA fluff um, and I also think it's really important to see for queer youth to see themselves in literature having happy fucking endings because spoiler alert this has a happy ending so often in literature in television in media the queer character dies why? Because they're queer. Bury the gays, right? Oh my god, that squirrel is so close to the window. <laughs> squirrel, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I think it was saying that so often queer characters are just disposed of. It is so important to see happy, cute, fluffy stories with queer characters, especially for queer youth. Um, so I love this. I think it's worth the hype. The next book I have here is Sabriel by Garth Nix. So this I read not that long ago. I think it was one of my five star predictions actually, and I did indeed give it five stars. This is the story of Sabriel. So Sabriel is at a magical boarding school across a magical border, and her father is the Abhorsen, who is basically able to deal with demons and cross over the barrier into death. And so one day at the boarding school, she is sent her father's uh, magical items, which is like a belt of bells that um, can be rung to deal with demons, which means that her father has passed over into death and she is the new Abhorsen, but she refuses to accept that and she goes on an adventure to get her father back. And so it's 
building this world. It's a lot of fleshing out this really beautiful, intricate, magical world, and I loved it. I cannot wait to continue on with this series. I am so glad that I picked this up finally. The next book I have here is another five star predictions that I read not that long ago, and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Again, this was one of those books that is hyped in certain corners of booktube, and I had heard a lot about it, didn't know much about it, sort of picked it up on a whim after I read City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab and really liked her writing style. And so I picked this up, read it, loved it. This is the story of Kel, who has the ability to travel between the three parallel Londons. So there is uh, Grey London, which is probably the most equivalent to our world. It is a place where magic has been forgotten. Red London, where magic is really um, vibrant and alive and the world is very colorful and full of magic. That's where Kel lives. There is White London, um, where magic has sort of been sucked from everything and like the color and life has been sucked from everything. And there is Black London, which has supposedly been lost to the magic. The magic is this overwhelming entity that wants to consume, it has agency. Black London has been barricaded, nobody can go in there. Kel likes to bring forbidden objects between the worlds. And one day he accidentally brings through an object that he really shouldn't have brought. And uh, that is where everything kicks off. That is where the plot kicks off. And I am so excited to see where this series goes. I love Victoria Schwab's writing. I want to read everything that she has written. I currently have everything that she has written in my possession because 2019, that's what I want to do, is just consume all the Victoria Schwab. Um, and she has a re-release of a collection of short stories, something about The Witch that I believe is coming out in March. I've got that pre-ordered. I'm going to prepare myself for all the Victoria Schwab goodness. If you haven't checked out Victoria Schwab, I do highly recommend that you do so. The last book I have here is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. So I loved Uprooted by Naomi Novik. It reminded me so much of Tamora Pierce. It gave me strong Tamora Pierce vibes, which, as I've already mentioned, was my favorite childhood author. She still remains one of my fav favorite authors ever, I guess. And so when I found another fantasy author who gives me similar vibes, I just... I wanted it all. Spinning Silver, it's fantastic. It dips into fairy tales. So there is Miriam, this the daughter of a Jewish moneylender, Wanda, the abused daughter of an alcoholic in town who owes the Jewish moneylender money, and so he sends Wanda to work off their debt by doing chores around Miriam's family's home. And then there is Irena, whose father is trying to wed her to the evil Tsar. And the three women's stories do come together. I love the weaving together and playing with a fairy tales. I love that it is uh, full of really strong female characters. I... it's great. I loved it. If you haven't read it, put it on your list, pick it up, give it a try. I think it's worth it. The last book I have here, I lied, I counted wrong because it's tiny and it disappeared between the other ones, and it is On Writing by Stephen King. So this is a piece of non-fiction. It is semi-autobiographical, semi... well it's not semi-autobiographical. It's autobiographical, it's writing advice smushed into one. Um, I read this again when I had my wisdom teeth out and I have been returning to it. I made all these post-its of like the things that stood out to me as really excellent writing advice. I returned to it so often while I was doing NaNoWriMo either for um, inspiration or advice or just like just some some comfort. I think the title really says it all. This is Stephen King giving advice and reflecting on the experience of writing. I have picked up some books by authors that I like their works or are well established in the genre that I want to write in, um, and so I have uh, Neil Gaiman's sort of reflection on writing, View from the Cheap Seats. I think other things are in there too, but again, Neil Gaiman, who writes fantasy and sci-fi, um, I have Ursula K. Le Guin, who does fantasy and sci-fi, and I have Philip Pullman's book, Is a Gift for My Cousin. 
it's in the mail. Reading this has really inspired seeking the advice of other writers. I found this so helpful in my own writing that I am curious to see what other folks whose work I respect and enjoy what their advice is, what their experience on writing is. And if you are interested in writing, even if you're not a fan of Stephen King and you're interested in writing, I would recommend this. <coughs> <laughs> I am losing my voice. So those are the books that really stand out from this past year. 2018 was a really interesting year for me. I hope 2019 is better. I'm sure it will be better. I want to read more. I want to film more. I want to do more. I have so many things that I want to do and I think I'm now in a place like mentally where I'm prepared to actually like conquer these goals. I'm looking forward to 2019. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you've read any of these books or if I have sparked an interest in any of these books. I hope you guys have a very happy new year. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!